Hello everyone. Our today discussion is about the most common suggested blood test revealing many health parameters of a person. I am Dr. Arun Kumar and today we are delving into intricacies of the complete blood count or CBC. Our focus will be on sample collection, interpretation and condition based example and the quality control and assurance to enhance your clinical knowledge. Let's begin with the sample collection process. Accurate sample collection is crucial for reliable results. There are two primary methods. Veni puncture and finger stick. Veni puncture is the most common method. It is performed by inserting a needle into vein in the patient arm, typically in the anticubital fossa. Proper technique is essential to avoid hemolysis and ensure accurate results. The blood is collected in a tube containing an anticoagulant like EDTA. Detailed steps for veni puncture. Step 1. Assemble all the necessary equipments like gloves, tourniquet, alcohol swab, needle, collection tubes and gauze. Then apply the tourniquet to the upper arm to encourage the veins with blood. Then clean the puncture site with an alcohol swab in a circular motion. Insert the needle at 15 to 30 degree angle with the bevel up. Once the blood flows into tube, release the tourniquet. Withdraw the needle and apply pressure to the puncture site with gauze. Second method is finger stick. It is commonly used for pediatric or geriatric patient. A small drop of blood is collected from finger using a lancet. This method is less invasive and more comfortable for patients with fragile veins. In step 1, we warm the patient's hand to increase the blood flow. In second step, clean the puncture site with an alcohol swab. Then prick the site of the fingertip with the lancet. Collect the blood drop in capillary tube or onto a slide. Once sample is collected, proper handling is very important. The sample must gently mix to prevent clotting and labeled accurately with the patient full name, age, date of birth, gender and unique identifier or UHID to ensure the correct identification. Now let's move on interpreting the CBC result. The CBC includes several components. First is RBC or red blood cells. They carry oxygen to the tissue. Normal range varies from 3.5 to 5.5 million per microliter. High RBC levels could indicate dehydration or polycythemia, while low levels could indicate anemia. Let's understand by example. A 45 year old male present with fatigue and headache. His CBC shows elevated RBC count. So, uh, after the further evaluation, he was diagnosed with polycythemia vera. Next component is white blood cells. They fight with infections and there are two types of white blood cell counts in the CBC. First one is total leukocyte count or total white blood cells count and second one is differential leukocyte count. So, normal total leukocyte count ranges from 4000 to 11000 cells per microliter. High total WBC count levels may indicate an infection or leukemia while low level could suggest bone marrow issues or sepsis. Next is differential leukocyte count or DLC also known as the differential white blood cell count. It measures the percentage of each type of white blood cell into blood sample. This count help in diagnosing and monitoring a variety of conditions including infections, inflammatory diseases, hematologic malignancies and immune disorders. There are five main types of leukocytes each with distinct functions. First is neutrophils, they phagocytes the bacteria and fungi. Second is lymphocytes, include T cells and B cells and natural killer cells which are essential for adaptive and innate immunity. Third is monocytes, they differentiate into the macrophage and dendritic cells and play a role in phagocytosis and antigen presentation. Fourth one is eosinophils, eosinophils combat parasitic infection and play a role in allergic reactions. And last one is basophils. They release histamine and other mediators in allergic reactions and inflammation. Normal ranges for each leukocyte type in adult are neutrophils ranges from 50 to 70 percent, lymphocyte 20 to 40 percent, monocyte 2 to 8 percent, eosinophils 1 to 4 percent and basophils 0 0.5 to 1 percent. Interpreting the differential cell leukocyte count involves comparing the patient values to the normal range and considering the clinical context. Abnormal value can indicate various conditions like neutrophilia that is increased neutrophils can be seen in bacterial infections and inflammation or even in stress. Second is neutropenia or decreased neutrophils which can occur in bone marrow suppression or severe infections. Lymphocytosis, increased lymphocytes commonly seen in viral infection and some leukemias. Lymphopenia, decreased lymphocytes which can occur in immunodeficiency disorders. Then monocytosis, increased monocytes observed in chronic infections and inflammatory conditions. Eosinophilia, increased eosinophils 
seen in parasitic infections, allergies, or certain malignancies. Basophilia, increased basophils, which can be associated with chronic myeloproliferative disorders. Let's see the examples. First example, a 35-year-old male present with fever, chills, and a productive cough. His CBC shows elevated white blood cell count with a neutrophilia. Differential count reveals 80% neutrophils. So, what this suggests? Signs of uh, infection in the history are given and raised neutrophils counts are also there. So, this could be a bacterial infection like pneumonia because the patient is having productive cough and uh, in the treatment antibiotics can be prescribed after the culture. Second example, a 25 year old female present with sore throat, fatigue and swollen lymph nodes. Her complete blood count CBC shows an elevated WBC count with lymphocytosis. Differential cell count reveals 60% lymphocytes means there is lymphocytosis with sore throat, fatigue and lymph adenopathy that is swollen lymph nodes. So this is indicative of a viral infection such as infectious mononucleosis. Third example, a 50 year old male present with a low grade fever, weight loss and night sweats. His CBC shows elevated WBC count with monocytosis. Differential count reveals 12% monocytes. This condition suggests a chronic inflammatory condition as found in tuberculosis and further test needs to be conducted to confirm the diagnosis. Fourth example, a 40 year old female presents with itching, hives and difficulty in breathing. Her CBC shows elevated white blood cell count with eosinophilia. Differential counts reveals 8% eosinophils. In this, patient is having itching and hives that are indicative of allergic reaction. This indicates the finding of an allergic reaction and antihistamines are administered. Fifth example, a 60 year old male present with fatigue, pallor and frequent infections. His CBC shows an extremely elevated WBC count with basophilia. Differential count reveals 5% basophils. In this, as you can see, the patient is having frequent infections. This is suspicious for chronic myeloid leukemia. Bone marrow biopsy is need to be performed to confirm the diagnosis. And last example for differential leukocyte count is a 30 year old female present with recurrent infections and weight loss. Her CBC shows normal WBC count but lymphopenia. Differential count reveals 10% lymphocyte. Here you can see the patient is having recurrent infection with weight loss. This suggests an immunodeficiency disorders. And lymphocytopenia is also there. This could be HIV. Further testing needs to be done like HIV test should be performed to confirm the diagnosis. In conclusion, the differential leukocyte count is powerful diagnostic tool that provides valuable insight into various clinical conditions. Our next parameter in CBC is hemoglobin that measures the oxygen carrying protein in red blood cells. High hemoglobin levels can suggest polycythemia while low hemoglobin levels might indicate anemia. For example, a 60 year old female present with fatigue and pallor. Her CBC shows low hemoglobin level. Then she must be suffering from anemia that could be iron deficiency or other anemia. Investigation should be done to confirm the cause of anemia. Next parameter is hematocrit. It measures the proportion of blood volume occupied by the RBCs. High hematocrit could indicate dehydration. In dehydration, there is concentration of the cells because of low plasma and a low hematocrit suggests anemia. Next parameter is platelet. Platelets are crucial for clotting. So high platelet count can increase in the risk of thrombosis while low count can lead to bleeding disorders. Increased platelet count is known as thrombocythemia and decreased or low platelet count is known as thrombocytopenia. Additionally, in addition to the above parameters, there, there are indices like mean corpuscular volume MCV, mean cell hemoglobin in MCH, mean cell hemoglobin in concentration MCHC and mean platelet volume MPV which provide further insights into RBCs and platelet characteristics. MCV measure the average size of RBC. High MCV can indicate macrocytic anemia while low MCV can suggest microcytic anemia. 
then mch measures the average amount of hemoglobin in a single red blood cell so high mch can be seen in macrocytosis while low mch can be found in microcytosis mchc that measures the average concentration of hemoglobin in a given volume of rbcs high mchc can indicate spherocytosis while low mchc can suggest iron deficiency last one is mpv it measures the average size of platelet high mpv can be associated with platelet production disorder while low mpv can indicate platelet consumption disorder and the crucial part is quality control and assurance so in quality control calibration of the instrument should be ensured to accurate measurements proficiency testing should be done by participation in an external proficiency testing programs to validate test accuracy accreditation compliance with the national and international standards for laboratory practices in conclusion a thorough understanding of cbc sample collection interpretation along with valid report results is essential for accurate diagnosis and treatment thank you for watching stay tuned like comment share the video and subscribe medical guruji for more insight